Hello, welcome to Maths Revision. Um, I'll give it a minute to wait everyone to turn up and then we shall start going through today's topic which is Algebra. The first topic that I'd like to go through in algebra is kind of a basic one, is substitution. Now, we'll know from our English lessons that substitution means to swap for something. Now, if we were to swap um, on a football pitch, you know, one player for another, that's a substitution. Now, in algebraic terms, when we substitute something, we might start with um, sorry. might start with two a. Now, if a is equal to four, what we do there is we get our two, and because it's next to our a, that means two times a. Now 2 times a, when a equals 4, we just substitute in a 4 instead of an a, and that gives us our answer of 8. So we start off um, by looking at what we've got, we'll see that the 2 is next to the a. 2 next to a means that I need to multiply them together. So when I've got a equals 4, so that means 2 times 4 gives me 8. Now, that's a more basic example. If I was to move on to a bit more of a difficult one, so let's write it on here. So I've got 5c plus 2 if c equals 6. So again, I've got my 5c. They're right next to each other. So that means 5 times c. Now the reason we don't use the time symbol in algebra is because times look too much like x. So times looking too much like x, which as you'll know is the most commonly used letter in algebra, we can't use it because it could get confusing. And depending on the format and the font that you use, that's why we don't use the time symbol. So 5c means 5 times c. So I've got 5 times six which gives me thirty and then go back to my original calculation I had five C plus two so I get the two that was there originally so thirty plus two gives me thirty two so five C plus two when C equals six gives me thirty two so again that's one of your more basic substitutions. When you're looking at more difficult ones, so let's start off with branching out to the next stage of algebra. So I've got x squared when x equals 5. Now squared means times by itself. So I've got x x x times x now, substituting in, that gives me 5 times 5, gives me 25. Now, if you have access to a um, timetable grid, you'll notice that your square numbers 
right down the middle, right down the diagonal line on a times table grid. So square number is 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, etc, etc. It's any number times by itself. And on a times table grid, right down the middle, and you can easily see them normally highlighted or shaded in with a darker colour to make it easier to see because they are so important numbers. Now again, let's progress a little bit more. So we'll go from a base, we're going to now include two variables. Now in algebra, a variable is a letter. It's math jargon that we use and that people can access and people tend to get confused with a lot but variable just means letter um, it's called a variable because it can vary depending on what the question says um, the, the letter will vary in value x will not always be equal to one or two or three it may be equal to something else completely different in the next question that you look at so in this one let's have a look with two variables so I've got 5x plus y when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 4. So here, you'll notice that I've got my 5x, 5 and x are next to each other. That means 5 times x. So I've got 5 times 6. And I've got my plus y here, tag on at the end. So plus Oh. Now you'll notice here that I have a multiplication and a plus all in the same um, expression. Now whenever I do, I need to employ the rules of bid mass. Now bid mass stands for brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So whatever one of them I see first, that's what I need to do. So I look, I have no brackets, so cross it off. I have no indices, indices are powers. So I have no powers, I have no divides. I have a multiply though, so I have 5 times 6. So 5 times 6, which gives me 30. And then that's all my multiplication is done. And then I've got this plus. 30 plus 4 equals 34. So 5x plus y, when x equals 6 and y equals 4, equals to 34. Now, to give you a little bit of practice, I'm going to put a few questions onto the screen, and you can attempt them. I'll give you a couple of minutes on this. Um, and then we shall review in a minute. So I, I have here with question one. So x plus y squared y. Twenty over x and x squared plus y cubed. Now we're going to do all these for the same value, just to save screen space, and we're going to give it as x equals four and y equals three. So if you can spend the next three minutes working on those three questions, we'll then talk our way through it.
whilst you're here, if you have any questions, you can post them into the comments section um, on the YouTube chat, and I'll be able to answer anything along with what I've prepared to go through today. Right, so let's take the first question and then we work on from there. So here we have x plus y squared. We said x is 4 and y is 3. So x 4 plus now y is 3, so that's 3 squared. Right. 3 squared. Now we said so x plus y squared, x is 3 and y is 4. I'm oh, sorry, wrong way around. is 4, y is plus 3, apologies. So here we have 4 plus 3 squared. Um, now we said before, squared means times by itself. So 3 squared is no longer 3 squared, it is 9. So 4 plus 9 equals 13. So the answer to the first question is 13. Now, Check that against your answer. Now the next one that we had was y plus 20 all over x. Again, x is 4, y is 3. Again, we can just substitute in. So here we've said y is 3, so we can put 3 over the top of y. Um, and x is 4, so we can put 4 over the top of x. Now 3 plus 20 gives you 23. So we now have 23 over 4. And if we use our calculator, 23 over 4 gives us 5.75. So the solution to the second one is 5.75. Our third question, we had x squared. plus y cubed. Again, we use the same values of x is 4 and y is 3. Now earlier we went through squared 
And we said that squared just means times by itself. Now cubed, very similar to squared, means times by itself like three times. So in this case, x squared is 4 squared, so it's 4 times 4. y cubed, 3 cubed, is 3 times 3 times 3. Now 4 times 4 gives us 16, and 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 27. Plus them together, and get 48 as your final answer. The final answer to the third problem should be 43. Now, the second topic that I'd like to move on to, so we've looked at substitutions, one of the more kind of basic topics in algebra, just changing a, num a letter for a number. Now, a letter can mean anything. It doesn't matter what the letter means. It can just mean anything that you decide it means. We're going to look at expansion. Now, to start off with, we're going to look at expanding single brackets, and then we'll move on to expanding double brackets. Um, we shall then move on to some of the more complex algebra topics that you're going to come across in the GCSE Foundation paper. So first question, four brackets y plus two. Now before, when we've looked at questions with brackets involved, we employ bid mass. However, in this case, as we don't know what y is, because y is a variable, we can't employ bid mass. What we can do is we can expand these brackets, though, to make it a, a, a more workable solution. So to start with, there are a couple of different methods of doing this. The way I like to do this is I like to use, essentially, a crab claw method, where I do... start with I would do 4 times y, so each of those lines means times, so 4 times y gives me 4y, and then 4 times 2 gives me 8. Now I'll keep the symbol I have in the middle here, because that's the symbol that's there, so a plus times a plus gives me another plus. So my solution to this is 4y plus 8. Now if I was to move on to another question, so th this time a, a little bit more in depth, so we'll go with y bracket 3y plus 5. Now you'll notice here that there's a y on the outside and there's a y on the inside. Now this leads on great from what we did last. Last we looked at y squared, x squared, and we decided that you know that just means times by itself. Now here I have a y and I have a y. Them two are getting times by themselves. So if I was to extend my crab clause on this, I'd do y times by three y. So there's no number in front of the y on the outside. So that would end up it's still 3. y times y is y squared, as we discussed earlier. So I would then look at my top line, so up at the top, and I would do y times 5, and that gives me 5y. Now, I can't simplify this because we have different indices. So there's no index number on the 5y, and there is one on the 3y squared. So at the moment, that would just stay as it is until we get a value for y, and then we can revert back to our previous topic of substitution, and we can look at substituting values in and getting um, a value for the entire expression. Again, if we were to move a little bit harder again, so we go to 
5y bracket 2y plus 1. Now there is a number on the outside here. So I have a number on the inside, a number on the outside. I have a letter on the inside, I have a letter on the outside. So that's just the first term within this expression. So here I would, as always, extend the clause so I can multiply. As we said, those clause means multiply. So I'm going to be multiplying everything. So first case, 5y times 2y. Now because there's a letter and a number on both of them, I need to do 5 times 2, gives me 10. y times y, y squared as we discussed earlier. And that's my first term expanded out of these brackets. Then I'd get the symbol. So I've got a plus there. There's nothing in front of that 5y, so that is a plus. I'll keep that as a plus. And then I will go back to my 5y and times it by 1. So I have 5y times by 1 gives me 5y. So my solution to that expansion is 5y plus 1. And, sorry, 10y squared plus 5y. So it's 5y times by 1 gives me 5y again. Now that's expanding single brackets. I'm going to put move on to the next topic um, within expanding brackets still. So we're still going to be looking within the same topic. However, we're now going to be looking at expanding double brackets. Now, there's a couple of different methods of expanding double brackets um, depending on the method that you're taught or the method that you prefer to use. I'll show you the method that I prefer to use first, and then there are other methods afterwards. Um, so I'll show you the three different methods, and you can pick whichever one you want to use. Either way, you get the same answer for all of them. So here, so I have y plus 3, close bracket, open bracket, y plus 5. Now the method that I prefer to use is it's more commonly known as eyebrows and a smile. So I get those two, drawn some eyebrows on, draw myself a nose, draw myself a smile. It's like quite a sleepy person, just giving a sleepy smile, you say. Now here, it doesn't matter which order you do it in because we simplify everything later. So I'd start off y times y, y squared as we discussed earlier, 3 times 5, gives me 15, 3 times y, gives me 3y, and y times 5, gives me 5y. And then gather everything together, so I get my y squared, I keep that on its own because there are no other variables that have a squared in it. So I now have y squared. That's that one done. I have my 3y and my 5y. I gather and make that. And then two are gone. And then I have my 15, which I just tag on to the end. So expanding that bracket gives me y squared plus 8y plus 15. Now that method is called eyebrows and a smile, and that's the one that I personally prefer to use. However, if you have your own method, it might be one of the other two that I'm going to show you now. Um, you may want to use that instead. So this next one. Change it again. Same method. Um, sorry, same same outcome, different method. So this one x plus five, x plus one. 
this is your grid method so it's what a lot of schools and colleges and a lot of teachers will teach when they're looking at multiplication now with this it's slightly different that we're using algebraic terms so let's set up a grid so i've got x uh, plus five and x uh, plus one let's set up the grid as i would doing a multiplication Next, I do exactly what I would in multiplication, and I would look at just multiplying into the empty boxes. So x times x gives me x squared, x times 5 gives me 5x, x times 1 gives me x, and 5 times 1 gives me 5. As I did earlier, I gather everything together and present it in one sum, what one expression. So I have my x squared. There's nothing else with the squared, so I'd have to leave that on its own. I have 5x and x. So I'll gather them together. Give me 6x. Into the gone. And then I have my 5. Again, to tag it on at the end. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 5 is the expansion for that expression. What I'm going to do now is put three questions on. Uh, actually, I'll put two questions on just so I can save space um, on my screen so that you can have a go of yourself. Again, if there's any questions you have or anything you'd like me to go over, please post them to the comments box um, in the chat on YouTube and I'll be able to explain to you how to do it or how to do something else within algebra that you've asked for. So this one here, so the first one I'd like to expand It's a little bit more difficult than what we did a minute ago so, Is that one, so 2y plus 1 and y plus 3 And the second one I'd like to have a go at Three x plus two, two x plus three. So I shall give you a couple of minutes, and you can attempt them. We will then talk over our solutions. As I said, if you do have any questions, comments, please leave them in the chat bar, and I'll see if I can get back to you as soon as I can.
You may have just seen something pop up on the screen saying, leave your name, and I shall let you choose, know that you're doing some revision today with myself. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work through these two um, expansions that we have in front of us. I'm going to expand it in green. So here I have 2y times by y gives me 2y squared. I have 1 times y, and 2y times 3. 2y times 3 gives me 6y. 1 times y gives me y. So if we gather them together, I have 7y. Um, and then lastly, I have 1 times 3 gives me 3. So for that one, 2y squared plus 7y plus 3. Now our second one here... Um, I'm not going to black pen. So 3x times 2x. 3 times 2 gives me 6. x times x gives me x squared. So I have 6x squared. I then have 2 times 2x gives me 4x. I have 3x times 3 gives me 9x. If I gather the 4x and the 9x together, I get 13x. And then lastly, 2 times 3 gives me 6. Now you'll notice on that second one, I expanded in a slightly different way from eyebrows and a smile. Um, in that, it doesn't really matter which way round the arrows go, as long as everything's being multiplied together. However, whilst practicing, I would like you to do eyebrows and a smile in that order, because it helps you get used to doing math. Uh, next topic that I'd like to look at is how to solve expressions. So, sorry, equations, not expressions. So, how to solve equations. Now, the difference between an equation and an expression is that an equation is solvable because there's an equal sign. An expression is something like 2x or 2ab. Um, for x, y, they're all examples of expressions. An equation is something like 4g equals 8. So with the knowing the 4g equals 8, I can then tell you what g is. So if, let's just use that example I've just given, so if 4g is 8, I would get all of this, because for g there, I only want to find one value for g, and I would divide everything by 4. Gives me g is equal to 2. Now there are your more basic versions of solving equations, and they do progress quite rapidly throughout. However, for now, we'll start off with the basics and we'll build our way up. So, we'll move on to... x plus 5 equals 7. Now this is saying something, so a number, plus 5 equals 7. It's not telling us what that number is, that's for us to find out. So if something plus 5 equals 7, if I take that 5 off both sides, that leaves me with x equals 2. <coughs> So, 2 plus 5 equals 7. Again, it's still quite a, a basic solving of equation. However, you do need these formative stages to be able to progress to the more difficult ones. Again, just a variation on one of your more basic ones. So x over 2 equals 10. That's 
saying x, you know, it's a number, so a number divided by 2 equals 10. So to solve this, I would do the opposite of what this is telling me to do. I would times everything by 2. x divided by 2 times by 2 gives me x, and 10 times by 2 gives me 20. So in this case, x is equal to 20. Now let's progress to a more difficult one. We'll progress quite quickly, and then we should have time to practice some more. So in this one, I'm going to go with 8w plus 20 equals 4. Now, when solving an equation, I essentially need to do bid mass backwards. So instead of bid mass, I'll do sum dib. So I'm going to start off. Are there any subtractions in there? No, there are not. So I move on to my next step. Are there any additions in there? Yes, I have an addition right here. Now to get rid of an addition in algebra, I do the opposite of it and I take it away. So I'm going to take away 20 from either side. So then that gives me 8w equals minus 16. So I've done my additions. Are there any multiplications? Yes. As we discussed at the very start of this, 8w is a multiplication. It's saying do 8 times by w. So 8w is minus 16. Again, I need to do the opposite of this. So instead of times, the opposite of that is divide. So I'm going to divide everything by 8. And I end up with w equals minus 2. In this case, w is minus 2. Again, a little bit more difficult. W plus 3 over 4 equals 6. So to solve this, I would start off, I see here, there is an overruling division. Now this here is an issue. I can't use backward bid math because I need to solve this part of it first. So what I would do is I'd times everything by 4. That would then eliminate this. So if I do w plus 3 equals 24, that's saying a number plus 3 equals 24. To find out what that number is, take away the 3 from both sides. Apologies, not y, w. w equals 21. And what I'd like to do is move on to a question that would incorporate the last two topics that we've discussed. So here I would like you to try, just on your own, I'll come back in a few minutes with a solution, um, how to solve this one. Again, if you have any questions, please post to the YouTube chat part of uh, 
um, of this channel and I shall try and get back to you as soon as I can. Let's have a look at solving this. So, our last topic that we discussed was expanding brackets. Um, now, expanding brackets means that we have to use what, what I call the crab claw. So, I do 5 times 2y gives me 10y. 5 times 7 gives me 35 equals 20. I need to get rid of this 35 here to get in the way of solving. So I minus 35 from both sides. Minus the 35 from both sides it gives me 10y equals minus 15. Okay, so it's not 35 minus 20. 20 minus 35. I then, need to get rid of this 10. Now to do that, I divide everything by 10. And that leads me, put my answer over here, y equals minus 1.5. Okay, so that's combining both the topics that we've discussed recently all into one. Let's look again slightly, very slightly more in depth. So with two brackets two x plus one equals three brackets x minus four. I should give you a minute. I'm not gonna give you as long as I did on the last question to attempt to answer this one. And if you do have any questions, please ask, and I shall let you know.
how to do whichever part of maths it is you're looking to work on today. To solve this one, expand. So, in this case, I need to expand both sides of the equal sign, as there is a bracket on both of them. So, what 2 times 2x gives me 4x. 2 times 1 gives me 2. 3 times x gives me 3x. 3 times minus 4 gives me minus 12. Now, what I need to do is gather all my x's onto one side and get all my numbers onto the other side. Now, I've chosen to move the 3x over because that's the smaller one. Okay, I always try and move the smaller x because it just makes it easier down the line for you. So I have to get rid of this 3x, I need to minus 3x. But I need to do that from both sides. So that gives me x, I have x, again to get rid of this 2, I need to minus 2, I need to minus 2 from both sides. So that gives me x equals minus 14. And that brings me to the conclusion of our live stream. If you do have any questions, please ask and I shall get back to you and let you know you know if, if how if there is anything that you're struggling on, I'll be able to help you. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you tomorrow. As I said earlier, please do leave your name and I shall let your tutor know that you did some revision um, with myself today and I'll let them know what you went through and you'll be able to progress hopefully closer to passing your GCSE at the end of the year or at least progressing on to the next level. Um, if there is anything else that you'd like me to go through, please leave a note in the chat section and I'll go through it for you.
Yes, I am going to finish the stream there. Um, again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you can join me tomorrow at the same time, same place. And we'll go through um, some more revisions for your Mac GTS Eats. In the meantime, if you'd like to find us on Twitter, it's at WLC underscore Math and so that's the Math and English department. Um, if you have any questions, you can message us on there. You can message us on YouTube. Um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thank you very much for taking the time today to review this and to do some math revisions. I shall.